So what's next in America's self-proclaimed sanctuary cities? The Trump administration is reacting with fury against federal judge William Oreck's ruling that struck down its executive order targeting those cities. Today, White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer said the ruling was not simply wrong, but dangerous. He said, quote, San Francisco and cities like it are putting the well-being of criminal aliens before the safety of our citizens. And those city officials who authored these policies have the blood of dead Americans on their hands. Spicer also called the ruling a gift to drug cartels and street gangs. Well, let's stop thinking about the ruling in a vacuum, though, and think about the precedent for judicial power that it sets. Anytime President Trump tries to implement a policy, his enemies are getting a lone district court judge to block it nationwide. It's not a hard thing to do, actually. There are more than 650 district court judges in the U.S., and finding a liberal one who's going to rule the way you want isn't hard at all. Now, these rulings may be reversed by a higher court, but they slow down the process to the speed of your local DMV. The standard we're setting is that any lone federal judge can block any national policy he wants for months or even years simply by dressing up ideological disagreement as judicial ruling. There are many implications of this, and they're all bad. The potential for abuse is huge, and it goes both ways. What if a conservative judge halted funding for, I don't know, Planned Parenthood? or placed an immediate injunction on every existing gun regulation. You might like that, I might too, but you can see why it's a road you don't want to go down. The possible excesses are almost limitless, and in the end, nobody, every, nobody wins. The least accountable branch of our government becomes the most powerful, the judicial branch, and various cities and states can nullify virtually any federal law they don't like, effectively becoming their own countries. There's a word for that. It's called civil war. Well, Roberto Hernandez is an organizer in San Francisco. He's planning a Day Without Immigrants protest for next Monday when he hopes that tens of thousands of immigrants will refuse to show up for work as a kind of protest. Of course, we already had another Day Without Immigrants protest in February, but Donald Trump is still cracking down on illegal immigration, so apparently it's time for another one. Just how much work are immigrants supposed to miss? Roberto Hernandez joins us tonight. Mr. Hernandez, thanks for coming on. So thank you my, for having me on the show. Thank you. My guess would be, I don't know what's going to happen, of course, but my guess would be that most immigrants, legal or otherwise, come to this country to work, not to become political activists. So m most of them probably just going to work, right? I mean, how many people are actually going to take part in this, would you say? Well, here in San Francisco, we're very political. You, you're, you're from San Francisco, so you know exactly how we, we operate here and how we yes, organize and we stand up and we rise up. And we're not going to stand for having, you know, the Trump administration just say, okay, we're going to build a wall, we're going to deport 11 million people who, who, just like you just said, are hardworking people. If you look at the number of immigrants that work in the fields here in the state of California, you're talking about hundreds and thousands of them who is going to pick the crops here in the state mm -hmm. of California if you suddenly all decide to like they want to uh, deport all well, the I immigrants that work in the fields here in, in California well, and that, so that, that we are on, on Monday May 1st here in crops, San Francisco are going yeah. to stand up and we're going to protest um, and not only it's not only about the uh, deportations, but also this wall that he wants to uh, build between Mexico and the United States. You don't build a wall between your neighbors. You know, all these walls around oh, the world second. have wait, been wait torn down. Wait, hold on. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Wait a second. Look, there's a huge distinction, of course, between immigrants and illegal immigrants. But in the case of illegal immigrants, and those are the ones you say are being targeted by the Trump administration. Don't you think it's a little much to sneak into someone else's country illegally and then protest their government? What country would put up with that? What sane country would allow that to happen? But let's go back to history. The Native Americans were, this is their land. You and I and everybody else is an immigrant. The Native American, this is Native that, American land. That's Did they ever wrong, ask you for a green I was card? born about a mile they from didn't. where you're standing I mean, right it's, now. It's no, no, like wait, this, hold on. This, 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 no, no, this government has created this control system about uh, who they let in and who they don't uh, allow to come in. This is a free country. Name people a government. Wait, have stop, always wait, stop, wait, no, okay, have I got People it. have like, always been allowed to come here. You're throwing so much stuff out here, Roberto, that just give me a chance to respond. Name a government on planet Earth that doesn't control or attempt to control who comes into its country? Has there ever been a government like that anywhere? 
Yeah, you go to Tijuana, uh, San Diego, and you can cross the border from the United States into Mexico without no problem. You go from, and I've done it, I've gone from uh, Mexico to Guatemala, didn't even, I wasn't even asked for a passport, just walk right in. There are many countries that do that. There so are what countries are you that allow, that allow, <laughs> sorry, I'm not trying to be mean. There are countries that allow anybody who wants to come in and live and work there. Let me just, let me clarify that. There is no such country. There has never been such a country. What you're describing is a place with no government. Because the purpose of a government is to define and defend the borders. And so that's, that's never happened. All right, so, American so let's Indians talk about, or not. So let's talk about, let's, so let's talk about this government that you're talking about. You know, 11 years ago, we had the exact same protests that we're doing on May 1st in 2006. You remember that? May 1st, 2006? And Vaguely. millions of people across the country protested, and our government failed to do comprehensive reform. Obama promised us his first year in office, his second year in office, he got elected again, he promised it, all the finger pointing went promised back between who? Congress who and the Senate illegally? and the President. Yeah, and but so, on, you know, Wait, can, can you I gotta I'm, hold I'm sorry. accountable They're not citizens. the Congress Wait, and Senate and the President for not doing their job. How can, let and me it's just unfair you. Wait, that stop. all of a sudden you get Trump sorry. in office this, this and he's going to say, okay, well, we're going to get rid of hold all 11 million people. You're breaking up families. Okay, I got it. I got it. You're breaking up families. Okay. Hard-working people. Let me ask you one question, and that is, why would a non-citizen who is not allowed to be here who does not have the right to vote, have a say in how the U.S. government operates? Very simple. It's you have a farm worker who's the hardest working individual on this planet. Don't you believe he has the right to have a say? No. And I, by the way, I admire how hard People well, then you and I, you and I on, disagree on because I, 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 Look, I'm not against I've, I've farm seen workers. farm workers and I've seen the hard you don't get work to that they do in this government. country. Okay. I think the California schools have declined in quality since I left. Um, Roberto, thanks a lot. It's good to see you tonight.